Before we start this lovely podcast, we want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. The first one, Abe is sipping on right now. Mm. Abe, what are you sipping on, Doug? Sipping on some Chimera coffee. Can you smell it? I can smell it. I can smell what you're cooking, man. <laughs> and it smells delicious. Yeah, man. Chimera coffee. Go to www.chimeracoffee.com. Type in the coupon code show the art and save 10% off your coffee save needs. Save some money. Now, if you want to train in some high-quality gear, the freshest, go to invertedgear.com. The dopest. They sell geese, rash guards, shorts, the cool L-list. t-shirts. What, 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 uh, sooner or later, they come out with like underwear, everything. compressions. And then when you, when you click add to cart a billion times and mm-hmm. you get to the cart, type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15 and save 50%. Sometimes like at this place that I am, uh, the the signal is a little bad, so <clears throat> okay. let me know if you can hear me well. Are you on Wi-Fi? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Are you in Brazil or Chicago? <laughs> no, I'm in Chicago right now, man. <laughs> I wish. So the the signal should be good then. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, Brazil is terrible, man. I... Sometimes I try to like make calls from there, and like. We have a meetings like every weekend with the groundswell, groundswell grappling. Yeah. Uh, and like it just like um, I, I have to make the meetings like um, you know, like on Skype. So uh, it's like terrible, terrible. Uh, yeah. No, Skype uh-huh. is. Uh, that's why I asked for FaceTime audio because Skype. Every time you talk over somebody, it cuts off and it like, it just doesn't. That's sound right. Good. I have a friend in Chicago that moved there. He's gonna move back soon. I wanted to go oh, yeah. visit him. Yeah. He, uh, nice. I, I've been wanting to go, and like that was gonna be the main reason why, like my excuse. But I still haven't mm-hmm. made it out there. So he's coming back. So uh, you said you're like uh, right now in uh, New York. Or, I'm, in, uh, I'm in New Jersey. Around New Jersey, yes. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, I want to make it out there soon because he's. I think he's moving back in August. I see. Uh, yeah. I like the New Jersey area too. It's yeah. Very nice. Have you been here? Oh yes, yeah, a couple of times like in Princeton, uh, New York, um, a couple of times like in New Jersey too with the uh, Emily Emily Quack. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. very nice. I really like it. Sure. Yeah. No. Uh, New Jersey's uh, some parts are nice, others are are weird. Yeah, exactly. I remember the first time I went to uh, <coughs> the ADCC. ADCC 2007 was in Trenton. Yes, that's right. Was was that yeah, the one that Marcelo no, I, I, won? Actually, the first, the second time, second time. Okay. Uh, so 2007, uh, I remember we arrived like a like a, in the evening time, mm-hmm. and there was a, a couple of people. They had trouble outside, and like you know, like a, they got like a, their luggage got stolen. I think like a Louvier. Uh, his luggage got stolen. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, outside, like of the, you know, like uh, because it was in Trenton, so it was really, really bad area. But I remember me and like uh, my uh, my husband now, but like at the time we we're like partners, right? So oh. me and like my husband, we like uh, walking on the street and we're like, man, this is so cool. Like we've never been there before. And remember, like everybody was looking like uh, looking at us like uh, a little weird, like uh, what these people are doing? Like you know, like uh, and this like a uh, late in the evening walking. <laughs> On the street and like uh, looking friendly to everybody, so <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah, who who yeah. won who won ADCC <laughs> that year? Was that Marcelo's year? Yeah, that was Marcelo. Yeah, uh, let's yeah, that was Marcelo. That was Marcelo. Yeah. Okay, I know mm-hmm. I, I didn't even get really into jujitsu at that time. So oh wow, yeah. So ADCC was in Trenton. I, I you know I had no idea it could have been anything, and it really didn't matter to me. I was probably yeah. about. I don't know. I was probably like fifteen at the time. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> at least like now you're like you know now you're in the in the arts, so that's good. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> How was your day? <laughs> it's so far very good. Yeah. Especially yeah, talking to you guys, like uh, thinking about lately about a lot of things and like uh, how my uh, journey and my um, you know professional life has been going. So I think like I'm excited for the the future. So. 
Sure. That's what I'm like. Yeah. Now I've read your bio. You can mm-hmm. find your story in every single website. You're one of the most decorated uh, jujitsu athlete athletes. Forget about mm-hmm. female, but just jujitsu in general. But everyone likes to hear the story in its purity from the person themselves. So can you give us kind of like, you know, the side of the story that you don't read in in the websites and the books about how your jujitsu journey began and and you know everything up until now i guess in the short version yeah of course uh so i basically started in like in 1997 that's the first time i tried jujitsu and um i just like i went because like um i i want to try like something different and my friend like like uh, climbing rock climbing and it's like wow you have like a really good grip so you really uh could do jujitsu it's like like I, I think you would be good and so that's how we started the conversation and because i always liked sports so i was like yeah i could like <laughs> give a try that's yeah. it rock rock climbing started jujitsu for you yeah really exactly. <laughs> yeah and i was like hey, you know my friend like uh, this like a uh, this like a uh, friend of mine who used to rock climb so like it was like a hard time like because I was like starting to work and like uh, a lot of things like going so I couldn't like uh, find the time like just like the weekends to go and rock climb so I was like looking for something like that will you know kind of like a, maybe like I could do like in a uh, regular basis as well because I always liked sports and like a, that was the transition like you know seventeen like eighteen years old the transition of like a, okay what I'm going to do next mm. yeah like so. Uh, so that was like a happening, but like then my friend like invited me to do a class, and I was like, "Wow, this is like amazing!" <laughs> but the the thing that like really like interested uh, interested uh, me was like uh, uh, seeing like a someone smaller uh, at the time being able to like uh, do like a good against someone like at least like I didn't know jujitsu at the time, but just like uh, by seeing like uh, the the way uh, the you know like uh, the roles uh, were. Just like uh, seeing someone smaller and like uh, being able to like uh, go to a good position, submit the other person. Sure. And uh, even myself, when I started jujitsu, I remember I had like a couple times like uh, people that uh, in the, because it was like really the beginning, uh, kind of like the beginning, like uh, for like uh, for women it was like a, the very beginning. But uh, I remember like a, a lot of guys understand, so they will go to the the, the gym or to, to the to the class, and they will like uh, see someone like me, like I was smaller than them like i remember this guy he was like a uh uh weight lifter uh, a weight lifter yeah um uh, yeah so he was like um like 300 pounds and like a really <laughs> huge guy and like you know i i put him in an arm bar and he like uh, he stood up with me and i like i stood up with him and he's like and he's like wow like it, this like really proves like uh, the wow. the art so those those things like really like uh, took me like a you know like really like uh, uh kept me in the art yeah. i think because it's really like uh, interesting, and it's always like a, not only like a, um, physical challenging, but it's like a mental challenging. So it was very like um, like eye opening like, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a really different experience. So that's like how I started, like a, basically. But um, it was like a really hard in the beginning because it was like a, not like a many women to train like at the school and like a, uh, the guys like we really had like a, this like a, a environment where women. Um, most of women, like at the time, like when I was like a training, they used to come to the school and like um, we don't we didn't know if like they want to train jujitsu or if they want to like uh, just like uh, find a date or something. So even for the guys, it was like a li- you know like a little uncomfortable because some women they will go there and like a you know like a, and they had girlfriends. So it was like a uh, I understood like a both sides and like they treat me like as equal because I was really there because of the uh, you know of the sport. And uh, I, I think like I had I had to prove myself a couple times and like but once they they saw I was there for jujitsu they really respect me as a you know like as a part of like a uh, the 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 crew and like a, mm. uh, I felt like you know like they 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 used to protect me against like you know if someone like outside will like you know try to like uh, you know like be be disrespectful with me or something like this they will always like keep an eye so. It was like a really like um, the beginning was hard in this way because like we have to we had to prove ourselves like a, you know like in this uh, in this way. But I think like uh, all the experience made me like a stronger um, competitor and a, a stronger um, a person like you know, like a, with a good character yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I think like you know I, I would never be like a, 
I, I'm very grateful for the experience I had and like a, that was like a, the the, I think like at the beginning how like I got into like a, into the art. So sure, if that makes sense. No, it it does. <laughs> and how long have you been training jujitsu since the first day? So like uh, this year uh, will be. Uh, 10 years, uh, oh, 10 years, 20 years that I started <laughs> like doing jujitsu. Wow. Yeah, 20 years. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Dude, honestly. That's my baby. My yeah, baby. That's like, your my, baby. My, <laughs> my it son. is. It is, right? You've been growing this little thing for so long. It's 20 years right? old. Yeah. That is amazing to think about. I always think about jujitsu as, especially people, people like you, people like myself. I, I think I'm in the same boat um, as far as being that age and deciding what I wanted to do and choosing mm-hmm. something like jujitsu martial arts as, as my career path because I wasn't sure about other things, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think when you start to take that into account and then you look at something like jujitsu as your degree, as your your study, as something you're you're studying in school, most people do not study something for 20 years that they have yeah. graduated in college with, right? Exactly. You know, you exactly. have you have three <laughs> masters over and over again, if you think about it like that. Um, and most people, not only do they not study something like you have been for 20 years, but they're not practicing it like live as well. Yeah. You're doing both nonstop for 20 years. Most people study it and then they go into practice and they stop studying, right? Their job. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, like it, it, uh, it's like... Um, uh, I, I, I only do jujitsu for a living. That's like, uh, uh, the only thing I do right now, uh, for a living. And I'm, um, when I started like, I'm really taking like a, this as like a, as a professional, uh, career, of course I had like a lot of doubts and like a lot of, um, uh, because it is like a sport and like, you never know like in the future. So you always have to be like a kind of like, especially being like a woman, I'm glad I had like a partner that was like a same boat like we had the same vision and we mm. we really like he was like the one who did like jiu-jitsu all his life he never worked with anything besides like a brazilian jiu-jitsu so okay. he really inspired me to like you know like a pursue like a this okay so that's what i want to do because when i decided like in 2005 to quit my job and like i just leave with jiu-jitsu it was a big step i was like you know getting like a uh, a promote a promotion my job and like uh, to be like a supervisor so like a kind of like you know my supervisor was leaving and she like asked me to stick like, uh, to uh, be in her place and i had like uh, some benefits it was like you know like a, a good job yeah so i was like uh, okay so i have to like uh, make the decision of like okay i have to take jujitsu serious and like uh, uh be the best as i can be as a competitor and like uh, as a jujitsu practitioner and or like a uh, being like a uh, kind of like a good in, in both, like a so I'll be like you know always like a, in my job, but like a kind of like a trying to like a train at the same time. And I, I believe me, I did this like a for a, a couple years because for a couple years I had to like I had like a, the college I was like a, doing college in Brazil, mm-hmm. uh, physical education. I was like a working as a in a regular job, and I was like a training jujitsu, and I still could make like a three championships like a, doing this. Really? So like a. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of people like they they don't realize like how much you have to put in and how much like uh you know like um, how much life we put like into the, into this like into this career. So that's why like for me like right now I really see it as a as a degree yeah. because I invested my time, I invested like you know I I made sacrifices. I quit my job and like at the time I remember my mom was like, "What are you doing? You crazy?" <laughs> <laughs> And of course, like the couple, uh, the, the few, like uh, the first few times, like, uh, you know, because this was in 2005, uh, my first ADCC. So when I go, when I went back from like the ADCC, uh, I decided like I was like only like uh, uh, going to like uh, do jujitsu and yeah. like uh, because I lost like an uh, ADCC and that was like a hard year, but like it made me like it was like a, a hard year, but at the same time it was like a big year for me because it was like a, a lot of decisions and like a lot of, you know, so um it was, I think, like, was the tipping point for my career at this point. Like, I had to decide, okay, whether I will be, like, you know, um, you know, so-so in both things or if I will, like, you know, just, like, a focus in one thing. And I think, like, you know, that's, like, a people miss sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I'm not, like, a saying you have to, like, a quit your job or you have to, like, you know. But I I, th- I think, like, people, like, a really, like, a quit, like, a easy on things, you know. Like, a, they have opportunities, they have everything, but sometimes they, they, they just, like, a 
because it's hard in the beginning. You have to like a deal. Like I, I bet like a, right now, like you saying like a, you like a going through like a, this like a decision whether you like a, you you going to move to like a professional, more professional like a you know lifestyle in jujitsu or mm-hmm. and it's a lot of pressure, but. Yes. No, yes. yeah. and, like you can inter- interrupt me. I talk too much. <laughs> no, no, no. I like to listen. I like <laughs> you to hear your listen. story, please. Um, but uh, I was gonna say it. It's also very important, not just in in a decision like this, but any decision in life, to have someone like you have a partner that supports your decision, and in oh, fact yeah. pushes you into you know into making the good decisions, right? Exactly. Oh, exactly. I think like, you know, like this was like, a, uh, especially coming from Brazil, because it's like a different culture. It's like a different environment. Uh, even though like I speak like a little English when I came to United States because I did like English course in Brazil. Yeah. But my partner had zero English and I had zero, zero English. So <laughs> but we and like it was like a very funny. I have like a lot of many stories of like, you know, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, funny ones. But like. Um, uh, so you were the translator? Yeah. I, oh my goodness. Oh my like God. It, it was like translating all the time. And he was like, you know, I remember even in Brazil, he used to like make these like a big speeches, you know, like he used to talk and he used to like use like a words and like a, people would be like, wow, this is like, because he was really like a mentor in Brazil for many people. Mm-hmm. So he was like, a, you know, like a um, really like a, a good professor there. So like, uh, I remember Brazil, he used to have this and talk after class and like you know my english was like kind of like you know it was still like a little broke because it was like you know the beginning so i was like i had like english course in brazil but once you come here everybody speaks so fast and like you know it's very different so you have to kind of like a you know make this immersion to uh you know like uh, get used to it right but in the beginning was like um and he used to like make this speech okay so you have to translate exactly what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> so he will say like you know like, I use, like, a, this very, like, a, you know, and I said, like, I don't even know this word in Portuguese. How can I translate uh, to English? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's, that yeah. was funny. It's funny because I'll watch, you know, MMA fights or jiu-jitsu fights, and you see the translation in the bottom, and I'm always wondering, like, is that exactly right? it? It's hard to translate. <laughs> it's really it hard is. to translate. And, it is. Um, you know, especially when somebody goes off on a long tangent, and then you're expected to, to recite that entire paragraph in a different language. I don't know how people <laughs> yeah, expect you to exactly. do that. Yeah, exactly. So now women's jiu-jitsu. I mean, jiu-jitsu as a whole, I, I don't like to separate uh, women from men because we're all training the same, you know? Mm-hmm. But the amount of women that train jiu-jitsu now as opposed to 2005, 2010, um, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's completely different now. And I feel that even in competition, there's a lot more women that are competing and I'm sure a lot has to do with people like you who've who have competed so often and paved the way for for the young girls to want to train and and compete and and look up to somebody. So where do you see the difference in women's jujitsu? And when did you think there was a tipping point where where everyone started to take that that side of jujitsu women's competition seriously? I think we still like uh, growing this like in this matter. I think like uh, for women, it's like a uh, much different uh, than men. Always like uh, has been because our body is different and like we have like uh, we have to deal with different things in life. Like you know being uh, you know a mother, yeah. you know like uh, and like uh, those times of in life and like uh, being like having like a boyfriend, which I had like uh, some time. Uh, not like uh, my 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 you know my husband now, but like uh, I had like a time that I had this like a boyfriend who like you know didn't la- allow me to train, and mm. it's, at the time I was like eight. 18 years old so what do you what can you expect from like 18 years old right so like you decide you like you choose me or jujitsu <laughs> so you was like you do like the wrong decision you make the wrong decisions for sure yeah but like um uh i think like uh, uh we still like growing but i i do see like a lot of progress and like i'm happy with like uh, all the the women competing now um i think like um, right now i think like we have to like uh, keep keep going like you know get this momentum and, and keep going um, there's a lot of new, like, uh, people. I just, like, I feel like uh, right now, like, uh, um, I, we have to keep, like, um, keep this legacy, like, uh, the good legacy of, like, a good jiu-jitsu. And, like, I, I see the same way when you said, like, uh, I don't see as, like, a women's jiu-jitsu or men's jiu-jitsu. I'm the same way because I teach for men, I teach for women. Mm. Uh, I train with, like, a men most of my life, like, in my, uh, my career in the beginning. And, uh, but I, I do respect, like, the women that, like, you know, stayed, 
in uh until today because i know how hard it is like i know like sometimes my body's like a man like you know like i can keep up keep up with like a with a video like it's 18 years old and like you know <laughs> if you like a, if you go you sit down like to put it in the guard like you know like you like i start in the train and so you start like so let's say i decide like okay i'll play guard i'll He's like already like going to my back. He's like, man, yeah. this kid's like too fast for me. <laughs> but like you know, dealing with like this, uh, uh, so with this and like you know the the changes and like uh, the years and like uh, the years you put in the competitions, I really respect the people like uh, that continue the women that continue, and like uh, they started like you know this movement. I'm grateful for them. Grateful for Leca, for uh, Bianca Andrade in Brazil. Mm. You know, who I used to like, you know, see competing all the time. And she, at the time, she was like, you know, one of the, the first ones. And like um, uh, right now, I, I, I just feel like uh, uh, we cannot like, uh, you know, forget about these people. And I'm not even talking about me because I don't really even care about like, a, you know, like a titles or anything. But I, I, I do care about like, you know, like uh, the history and like uh, the people that made the difference in the beginning. Mm. Um, uh, for like, you know, like they made like a possible for, for us to keep going and but like i i do feel like a, now it's like the the, the moment like a, we we are starting to like a pick up and like a, with like a people to the mma like a mckenzie going to the mma like showing like you know that we have good people representatives uh jiu-jitsu represent, re- representatives uh in the mma as well and yeah. you know like um showing I, like a, the art what the art is about oops. I, I, I agree with that and I I'm sorry, did you hear me? I agree with yes. that and I, I feel that it's what will help women in sports is other sports supporting women in the sports. So what I mean by that is MMA. Women's uh MMA is starting to really get a big push and people are really starting to appreciate women in the sport of MMA. And you almost seem like it's more so than than really most other sports in America that involve women. Mm-hmm. And that I is, feel that too. Yeah, and that's helping. Mm-hmm. I feel that is also helping the women in jiu-jitsu. They're, they have someone to look up to. People can, can actually appreciate that, um, you know, women aren't as physically, as physical as men, but they can be just as technical, if not more so, because they're not dealing with the strength and the speed that men can rely on. And... I feel that that they're both kind of feeding off each other and they're both kind of helping each other. Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. And I like yeah. you know, uh, it's like a, of course MMA is like a, the I would say like a, the window for the world, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like a, what like a, the it's like a, what's like a, the boom right now, like after Ronda Rousey and like a, like a making possible for women, like making like a, um, uh, women like a, on the spot, right? Yeah. The women, women on the spot, like in the, on the, in the MMA. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but like, uh, uh for jujitsu, I just like, I feel like uh, sometimes like, uh, we have a thin line of, mm-hmm. uh, women trying to like, um, because one thing is like, uh, trying to prove that we can still like, uh, be like a feminine and like a uh, compete, and like, but I think like sometimes like people take it too like far. I, I, you know, like being like a competitor, I never remember a time. Of course, I'm like a, when I will go out or something like this. But at the time of the competition, I never remember like you know having like a, this like a, oh I have to go like a, you know put like a, this put, put this picture like of me like a, I don't know <laughs> you know time is like a different. But I I feel like we do have to like preserve some things like you know because. Uh, you know, just like a, this culture of like, a, I was like, a, uh, just like a going on the, um, on the feds on Instagram mm-hmm. and I saw like a, this, like a little girl and like, a, just like a, looking at her pictures, she like, a, might be like a, what, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, jujitsu practitioner. And like, and I was like, oh, looking at the pictures, like a, what message are we showing to like, a, to these kids, right? What we want them, them to like, a, to show to the world, like a, that, like, you know, uh, they look good in a gi showing their um you know <laughs> <laughs> or like if they, they do like a very good move and people will be like wow this is like it doesn't matter if it's like a guy or a girl yeah i think like you know when you're doing technique like let's say when i did like a flying umber in the in the finals of adcc it was a good technique not because i was like oh it's a good girl a good good, good technique for a girl no, it's a good technique in general even if it was for a guy yes. doing like a, a technique like this in the final it's like you know, it's a memorable, right? Like a, a, a submission. Sure. It's like a, something like a to 
it would be like um, uh, impressive for like a guy or a girl. It doesn't yeah. matter. Right? It was the moment that mattered, not necessarily the the exact technique being done exactly. by a specific person. And I think like a, we we already proved that like a woman can be feminine and like you know like a doing like a sports. I just like I think sometimes like people take it to the you know like to the next limit to the next level you know. Yeah. So I think like um uh what's like um uh, we ha- we have to think about and I'm not like you know saying like uh, it's wrong or it's right. It's up to like uh, someone like uh, people will do like uh, whatever they feel like it's right for them, right? But I'm just like you know my message is like uh, what message we want you like uh, leave for like uh, the next generation, mm. right? Like about jujitsu, about like you know like sure. uh, being a, a good representative for the sport. Yeah. That's like a, yeah. No, I agree and that goes for men and women. If you're if you're one of the top athletes yeah. in the world, whether you're in jiu-jitsu or basketball or or soccer, it doesn't matter. If you're exactly. one of the top athletes in the world, unfortunately or fortunately, it depends on how you look at it, you have a responsibility to the people that look up to you. There's a lot of people yeah. that look up to you and you have to be I mean, it's your responsibility to be a role model and yeah. you're the one who will choose if you're a good role model for the kids or a not so good role model so i, I guess that's what you're trying to say it's yeah, whether you like exactly. it or not some of these women some of these kids look up to you and you have to you have to show that you know there's a good side to them and and i and i'm not saying like you know it's not it's not you know you, if you feel good you should like a post like a pictures i'm not <laughs> saying like you know like this is like a something like a personal i post like a the other day i post like a picture because i feel so good like now that i'm doing crossfit and like uh in like in those years i never uh did something like you know outside of like uh, doing my my uh workout for jujitsu because i always like a uh, work out outside of jujitsu kind of like you know preparing my body for uh, getting my body stronger and my like you know I had like a couple injuries that, that I had to like take care and like I was be like a very very pr- protective with, with my body yeah. in order to be uh, be able to compete for all those years right like uh, since like I started like a uh, um, uh, training I have like a, a few years now like I've been like away from competitions for a while now but uh, I dedicated like a more more than fifteen years of my life competing like a, in a regular basis which is a lot like a two-hour body right sure yeah but like um yeah hello hello oh, yes yes yeah yes, yes. you cut off for a second can you hear me okay yes i can hear you. excellent so mm-hmm. an- another thing i wanted to cover and go over is your training how is your training now can you give people a little insight on how you train like on a weekly basis, what does your week look like? And maybe what is the difference between you training on a regular basis and you training specifically for a competition? So like um, uh, normally, like um, if I'm not training for a competition, uh, I, I will not like um, I, I will still like do the classes, like the, the regular classes, just because I like being like a student. Mm. And I always tell like a, uh, this is like a part of like a, your journey. You have to have if you like uh, don't have someone like um to like uh, if you don't have your student moment you know like the moment you can be a student yeah i think like a uh, year like uh, you miss a big part or at least like at uh, the moment you can roll and like uh, you can uh kind of like exchange techniques it's like a, you know if you don't have anyone uh like um above you right but right you you, you can have the, the the same feeling sure <clears throat> But like uh, normally, I train like um, um, every day. Let's say Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays will be like a more intense uh, training, like a kind of like a more like advanced class. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have like a I have like a, a lot of a lot of classes that I have to cover. Like I normally I teach like from five, uh, three classes, not like a lot of classes. I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> five to six. And then we have like a one hour that I like uh, sometimes I like, can do the drills mm-hmm. uh, with my uh, one of like a, my uh, teammates. And then I have to teach another class like uh, right after. So in the morning I do like a uh, normally my uh, functional training or like a, now I'm like a, doing like a, uh, the CrossFit, which is like a, helping me to maintain my weight and like, you know, keep my strength for jujitsu. I'm not like, you know uh like the type of uh, person that will put like a lot of weights and like a kind of like a goal push my limit yeah. because i know my limitations and like a, you know i know like a, i'm not i don't want to like a do a, maybe one day i can compete in crossfit but now my goal <laughs> is like a, not like a not not this my goal is like a, to keep 
uh, my body is still like a strong and like a, you know healthy for jujitsu. So sure. that's what I'm doing, uh, and it's been like complementing a lot my my jujitsu. But like a, that's like a norm. I don't have like a, a lot of things that I have to do. Like a, I do like a lot of things like for the the organization during the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like if I'm competing, then like a, I will have to add like a, at least like a, two more trainings. Two more trainings, I would say, like a, a week. Okay. And yeah. are you drilling a lot, or, or do you not rely on drilling as much? I know I some always like drilling, man. I always like drilling, and like drilling is a big part of my competitions. Like uh, because like when I'm um, really getting ready for the competition, as I I really uh, go for it, like a drills a lot. Like uh, but like in a it's kind of like a, a, a different speed sometimes like with different like uh goals like uh, let's say sometimes we'll be like a more focused to like uh, the strength yeah. sometimes we'll be like a more focused to like uh you know like uh, doing the technique more uh let's say correct but like with speed uh, okay so we'll have like a different types of training like a kind of like in a circuit mode that's like a, what i do like when i'm getting ready for the competitions which is like you know like a big help um but i always like drilling so I, I i dedicate like at least like a one out like a now because my time is so short i have like a, this like a tuesday and thursday that i can like i have this one hour in between the classes that's like at the time i have like a, to do like a uh the drill so normally i'll be like you know like a drilling with like a, a person that i i trust one of my uh my brown belts like a uh my world champions here in uh, chicago <laughs> so then like uh, we'll do like a um, one hour like she can drill a little bit I can train I can drill a little bit and then okay do you yeah, drill do you when you drill do you mix it up I I've been seeing online like because everybody likes to post their stuff and it helps inspire you on what to drill or how to drill or what to practice but I've seen that some people like to drill like one technique at a time in its root some people like to drill uh like two or three moves in a row that kind of flow together like it might be a chain Mm -hmm. of techniques and then some people like to drill like i do a move you do a move i do a move you do a move um how exactly do you like to drill do you like to drill one technique at a time or do you like to drill more of like a chain of techniques i i like to do like a normally i choose like a couple techniques Mm -hmm. so what i do like is like let's say um if i want to drill um if I'm going, like, let's say, let, let, let me divide, like, my training. If I'm going for a competition, I will have to do, like, a certain attacks and certain defenses, right? So let's say if I had dedicate one of my days to do, like, a lower body attacks, I would dedicate, like, a, the other day to do, like, a, a defenses, right? So then I would dedicate, like, a one day to do, like, a, let's say, lower body attacks and upper body attacks. The other day I would dedicate to, like, a... Not like, a, of course, we cannot do, do like a, all the escapes, but we can do like a, a at least like a choose like a two escapes, like a from like a, let's say one escape from the arm bar that you like a it's like a, your strongest one, yeah. Uh, one escape from like a, the leg lock that's like you know, like it will work for most of like a, the other ones, sure. right? Because like a, that's how mostly it works, yeah. Um, so then like a, that's like a, how I work. You know, like I don't put like a lot of techniques. Now I can like a drill like a more techniques. But let's say it will depend of your level of jujitsu too. You cannot like a, you know choose like a ten techniques if you white belt and you just like start in jujitsu, <laughs> yeah. right? Then you'll be like oh, confused. Sure. Uh, so I would say like you know like if for for, for a white belt, uh, just like a, if they practice one technique that day, let's say they practice one guard pass, uh, one guard pass, going to the mount position. So guard which is like a position I don't see like a very often and anymore. I was like, you know, like a, we can talk about this later. I talked too much. I told you. Abe. No, no, but, no. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. What position are you talking about? Close guard? No, mount position. Ah. You don't see mount position a lot anymore. Yeah, I think it's because people are afraid to get leg locked in Nogi. Really? Uh, that's what hmm. I've been seeing because a lot of people will bait the mount um, in Nogi. People that are that that are really into leg locks. They'll bait mm-hmm. the mountain to nogi, and then they'll you know they'll try to bump and upa escape and go into reaping positions from there. That's what I've been seeing. Mm-hmm. But I guess in the gi, it's different. Maybe people just like the back better. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people like the back the, now. Like nowadays, you see like a lot of people going for the back. Like not many people going for the the mount for, position. Yeah, definitely for sure. not. Yeah, yeah. I actually like a mount positions like a my. My, one of my best and my favorite positions of, of all times because it's just like a so dominant. 
Mm. And you can just like a so control the person so so uh, you know like a very good. No, like let yeah like a, sorry like a, sorry to like um you know. No, go off. Cut you off. Yeah. No, but but for my own uh, education, because I've been I've been honestly I've avoided Mount for so long. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a brown belt now, and I because I just always felt like I never had good control points. Now I'm uh-huh. starting to really focus on it as a brown belt. And to be good in in all the positions, but what is for my again for my education? This is for me. What mm-hmm. is one of the things you like to do, uh, or the, one of the most important things you like to do to maintain control in the mount position? Man, like a, for the mount position, I think like a, your hip control, like a, your hip power has to be like you know like a, your hip should be like a very heavy. Mm. And I think the way you place your feet, like you know like a, you use your feet and like a, you know you control with your hip. Okay. So basically, what I do, like, it's like a, I use my hip depending how the person is like a pushing me on the position. So let's say if the person is pushing, pushing me back, uh, you know, like they are pushing like my hips towards like their feet. Yeah. Right. So if they push him back, I will like a follow the same movement, kind of like an art. I can do like you know like a, I think it's like a, the angry cat, angry cat pose. I, I, I can recall the the name, but like kind of like a arching my back. I think like I know a, what you're talking about. Yeah. It's sticking my butt out a little bit. If the person is pushing me like a towards the head, then push my hip in like a kind of like a putting pressure towards like a, the person's um, uh, stomach or, you know, like a kind of like a pushing my hip down. Yeah. And like, a, you know, so it's like, a, you know, it's like, but, but I, I do like like the, the mount position a lot. And like a, it's a position that like is my go to position. Mm. So it's like um, uh, to control for me, like it's like. You have to spend time in the position, but it's just like once you you know how to control, it's just like you know because like for the IBJJF rules now, you can if you get the mount position, and I think that's like a perfect because mount positions uh you know should be like a, a you know like a, a dominant position. And like if you cannot escape, that's like you know why the person should move or like a, yeah. of course I, I'm lo- always looking for the submission, especially when I'm rolling here with like you know the students and like with the guys here. But like for the competi- in the competition, sometimes like you know you need that moment like okay, got the mount position. <laughs> Let me just like you know get like a, a few few seconds here, then I can like a progress like a, to the like, to the next one, right? To, the, sure. to a choke, to like a katagatami, which is like you know uh, one of my favorite positions, my favorite submissions from the top. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just like the way you move your hip. Uh, and like now in the IBJJF, you can hold the position. So let's say you get the, the mount position. The mat, your match is eight minutes, right? Brown belt, eight minutes. If you get the mount position in the beginning, the first minute of your match, you can keep the mount position until like at the end of your match. You can finish the mount position, like you know, the all the the whole eight minutes mm. on the mount position. So like a uh, uh, and won't because be and you won't be called for like stalling. You're saying you won't be calling for stalling. Okay. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Because like you know, it is a dominant position, and like the person on the bottom, you know, that's like a, their obligation to like escape. Sure. So yeah, it, like it's like a, a position that like a people, most people like a, you know like a, for the new. I'm talking about like a, the new generation, the new new generation they ignored. Yeah. But like you know, for like a, for me that like you know was. You know, Mount was the thing. But, yeah, like a, you know, like it was like a go to like a pass the guard. If yeah. you cannot pass like a, the full uh, full guard, go to the side control. I'll get the half guard mount. Mm. You know, half guard mount, half guard side control. Uh, pass the guard, side control, knee on the belly mount. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's like always like a it's like a different like a. Uh, but I think it's like a a, a very like a, a more let's say broad jujitsu because it's not focusing one thing. Like I'm just like going to like, you know, I'm not going to pass the guard because I know this person has a good guard. I'm just going to like, you know, like try to like uh, scramble or t- take the back yeah. for me. Like, no, like, no, you like, you're going to like, uh, if you're good, like uh, you can just pass the guard, you know, and go to the side control and progress from there. Mm. So like, uh, that's like uh, the difference, different mentality. So that's why sometimes like, you know, even though I know, like, uh, you know, different times, like, uh, my my focus now is, like, you know, I have, like, a lot of things that I'm taking care of, like, you know, this, the other side of the business, because we're in the head of Brazil 21, mm-hmm. me and, uh, you know, my partner, Andrea, so 
I, we have like a lot of things that we have to take care. Of. And I, I do like a, realize like I did a lot for for the community and for the sport. And it's time now for like for me to put like uh, my time. I'm not saying like you know I'm like going to like not do any competitions anymore. But I'm saying maybe we have a surprise like a uh, very soon. But uh, I'm saying like <laughs> you know like different times you know. But sometimes I feel like man, if I just could go to this one. And like mm. I, 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 I could pass this guard, you know. Like there's like a feeling you feel, I hear like, you. you feel, yeah, you feel like a, you look at the competition, like a man, like a, I can't, I'm not like a seriously, you're not like a trying to pass. You like a, it mm. means like sometimes like a frustrating, like a, for example, uh, one of my students now at the Pan American, uh, she went to the finals uh, on the brown belt division, final uh, on the brown belt division, light feather. Uh, against like uh, the the girl who just won the uh, world pro, uh, Maisa Bastos from okay. GF team. She just won as like a, you know like the world pro as like a, the lightest division. But like she they competed together. They made the fight. They made to the finals and like you know they both pulled guard. So like uh, then like uh, the other girl like in some point went to the top. So they they both pulled guard and that was like a, that, that was it. Now they have the rules like a uh, twenty seconds. Uh, they will get called for, for stalling. And I was like, Chris, and okay, so you're doing, like, you're doing good. Like, keep trying to go for the positions. Keep trying to, like, work. Mm-hmm. But then, like, you know, like, uh, they got the second uh, second call for stalling. So, like, the third one will be, like, a disqualification. And I couldn't see, like, the reference because there was, like, a TV kind of, like, you know, like, blocking, like, the reference. So, I couldn't, like, see the reference, yeah. like, on the side at all. But, like, they both, like, um, uh, pulled. So, the other girl went to the top. Okay, the other girl got the advantage, but then like you know like uh, uh Kristen like um almost like um got her in like a, some position something like this. So the match was like a draw, and then the last minute like the girl instead of like the girl who went to the top, Maisa, mm-hmm. instead of like a trying to pass, keep trying to pass, she sat back, and then my student didn't go to the top. Ah. So they are both like <laughs> a, again. In this game, like with the legs, and yeah. I was like, "Ah, oh, come on!" I just, <laughs> I just wish I could, like, you know, go there. And, yeah. Oh man, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's crazy frustrating sometimes. Yeah, yeah. but you feel like I, you could get in there and do it, and it'll just be done. Exactly. Yeah. Because look, <laughs> if like you know, for me, like uh, this is my student, right? Like uh, this is my student, like uh, Chris and Martin. I, I, uh, I, I think like I did, like have done, like we have done a good job with them. Uh, she has like a very good guard, and it's really hard for me to pass her guard. Mm-hmm. And it's a good thing, but I still can pass her guard. So that's like you know that proves me that's like a, okay. <laughs> yeah, I still <laughs> got like it. A, exactly. So my other student, Kristen Mikkelson, she like uh, she's like not competing this time because she got like a, a injury, but like a, she she won like as a, a purple belt mm-hmm. uh, the world as well. Um, so. She also has a very good guard. She went to like a, the the uh, one like a one time she competed against like you know like a, the Nachi who is like a really been doing like a good in the competitions right now like on the new generation yeah. black belt now. She competed against Nachi and the 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 the, the match was a draw, like a zero zero. Like it was like a, the referee gave to Nachi, you okay. know, because they felt like a, she worked more. But like you know, referee decision is referee decision, whatever, mm-hmm. right? But I, I just feel like, you know, uh, we're missing, like, this piece of, like, you know, man, just, like, pass this guard, right? Yeah. Like, you know, just, I feel like, you know, like, uh, the new generation is, like, very focused on, like, you know, playing guard and, like, um, taking the back. Sure. I agree. Yeah. And I'm I'm a huge fan of guard passing. And uh, I'm on the same boat as you, honestly. I feel like I have an old mind in a, in a, in the young man's game. I, I love passing. I think it's... I think it's becoming a lost art for some reason slowly, but there there are still many people out there that that um that pass and fortunately yeah, yeah, for yeah. me some of the people that I'm I'm a huge fan of like um like Cobrinha and Hafa Mendez yeah. they're bringing passing back they're starting to yeah exactly they're starting exactly. to sweep quickly and 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 play passing and hopefully that gets people back into passing when the stars yeah. do it essentially right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, la- I mean, like, yeah. Sorry. I I think like it's going like in a, in a good direction now. Like, uh, people are like, uh, you know, because it's a, always a cycle. I, I see it as a cycle. We'll go back, you know, like a, it's it's like a going back to like uh, to the beginning, and like you know, like, we'll have like a, this like a transition again sometime. Sure. 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 Exactly. Now, lastly, before we go, um, I just wanted to ask, what inspires you to keep going to train? What inspires you in life to 
to be motivated to to train and to teach and maybe some words for other girls that are young that are looking up to you that that need that extra motivation from someone like you yeah that's a very good like a very good question because i was asking myself maybe this question uh these days because i feel like uh, you know like I, i always like i put so much so much effort in, comp- in the competitions it's very hard for me like i was like really having like um, a conversation with uh, my partner like a uh, uh, this like a few days ago because we have like a new guy here from brazil he's like a, um he's going to compete at the world so he's a purple belt Uh, light feather purple belt so this kid like he's like on fire right so but when he came here he mm-hmm. got here to the school like a really like a you know like a like a fired me up again and like you know i always have this like inside of me like a, i wanted to compete again i want to like a, to do more right but mm-hmm. because like i'm i'm a, i'm a fighter so like i cannot like a, you know be upset if i'm not competing so i had a conversation i said like okay what motivates me to like you know besides competition because you know like a uh, uh, time will come i have to like uh, focus like in other things of my life and like you know it's not that i'm like uh, you know putting aside jujitsu because i train every day and i love training i yeah. love being on the mat i love teaching i love like you know sh- sharing my experience with other, with other people i love like a uh, learning that's mm-hmm. like you know a big thing for me So that's like the thing I would not, not like abandoning jujitsu, but how can I like, you know, still like a find. And I said like, yeah, that's like a, how I will find like a, my, my balance. Right. I cannot like a, be there competing right now. Like a, not for this, like a, this one, but maybe like, you know, uh, a different one. I, I think like I made my, uh, my name on the world, like a, the world, uh, the world championship. Sure. So I think like it, right now it's like a, not something that I, um, I would do it. Uh, not, not, not because my heart of fighter, like it doesn't want to, but <laughs> just because, you know, like, uh, um, you know, I have to like, uh, really focus in like other people. I have to like, uh, uh, give this like uh, the, the other people, the, the, the opportunity, the opportunity yeah. exactly the opportunity to be there and dedicate my time for, you know, like I share everything I have with them and like a uh, make, make possible for them to like, uh, to be there. So uh, I think like uh, the love for the art and like if you really like I feel like a, because that's the way it, it went for me in the beginning. I didn't know where jujitsu would take me. I didn't know if jujitsu would take me like, you know, to another country. Mm-hmm. I just like I kept doing because inside of me something like, you know, I, I, I felt something positive, positive every time when I went to, to train, every time when I was like a, going to like a, to practice. And I really felt like, you know, even though I didn't know, right, like where it's going to like uh, take me, I always like knew I would like uh, in the future, I would take something good out of it. So I can now I'm re- really grateful that I like even with all the, you know, like uh, the hard times, you know, having like a uh, having like a boyfriend who like I uh, didn't allow me to train, yeah. who was like, uh, you know, like a uh, like, uh, you know, like the hard times made me like, you know, made possible for me like uh, to be here, mm. made like me strong and maybe like uh, never give up. You know, that's how I felt like when I went in 2007, when I came to the United States, like it's been like a 10 years this year. And like uh, that's why I was like uh, looking back and making like uh, this like a uh, reflection because 10 years that I decided to leave my country and leave like, you know, like uh, with like a uh, three thousand dollars. That's what we had three thousand dollars to come to another country and make our lives. And today, like, without any investors, right, we have, like, two schools here in Chicago. We, like, we have, like, you know, like, another legacy. We have people that represent us in the high-level competition. So I think everything is possible when you put your hard work and your sacrifice into it. And, like, you know, there will be always time if you want to give up. And, like, because it's never easy to, like, uh, you know, like, uh, to pursue, like, a world championship. It's not easy to be a world champion. Everybody wants to be a world champion. And I'm, I've seen this, like, a lot. Oh, professor, I want you, like, you know, like, I want you, like, I'm ready for this. I want to train hard, you know. Yeah. But once they see what it takes to be there, they's like, a, oh, man. Like, no, the guy was too strong. Oh, like, the person was like, you know, excuses. they will find an excuse. Mm. Exactly. So, like, you know, it will be times that you want you to give up. And, like, you know, I'm not saying only about jujitsu. Even, like, for me, like, let's say in marriage, because, like, we do all together. Me and my partner, we, like, he's my professor. You know, right, I mean, his students like uh, we yeah. like uh, uh, partners in like in business, right? We have like a and we are like also like a husband and wife, but like it's a very complex relationship. So sometimes like I want to kill him, and I'm sure like <laughs> sometimes you want to kill me too. 
but it's a good thing, right? We have to like uh, learn how to work with the, you know, like uh, with the differences and with the uh, the hard times. Sure. And that's how you know, like uh, how life is. And for the new generation that like you know, it's like uh, listen to this, like in the future, uh, to like you know, keep pursuing your dream because everything is possible when you work hard with dedication. You know, like and uh, you know, with character, like right, right, like always doing doing the good things and never giving up. It's always easy to say, like, oh, man, I'm, like, too tired to train today. That's, like, that's how I feel. Like, sometimes in the morning, I wake up. I'm 38 now, man. I, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I'm like, man. But I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, like, a, this is this is good for me. This is good for my body. This is good for my health. I, I like to see me, like, in a good shape. I like my students to see me in a good shape. Then it's, and so, like, a, that's, like, a, how I see it. It's much, it's like, it's like, if I, if I have to like go to the gym complaining, I have to do my workout, right? Like, you know, oh man, this is like, this sucks, man. Sure. And, <laughs> right? Like, you know, and I have to like do the same workout, like, let's do this, man. Let's get over with and then be happy after, right? Mm-hmm. That's it, man. That's all. Like, excellent, you know, how, excellent. How I see life. No, thank you. And thank that, you so much, man. No, thank you. This was awesome. And, uh, I, I really learned a lot and I, I, I feel inspired to go train now. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm glad, like, I inspired one person today, man. Yeah. I'm glad, yeah. Thank you, and I'm sure... Thank you so much. I'm sure many people would be inspired after listening to this. You are um, someone to look up to. You've accomplished a lot, and you're a great person above all of that stuff. So, uh, thank you for Thanks, coming man. on. Thanks, man. That's, like, you know, like, that's the most important, like, uh, you know, accomplishment, I think. Like, right? We cannot be, like, a good, like, in everything, but, like, you know, if you, like, a, try to be your best every day, that's, like, a... That's what's important. Sure, absolutely. Being like a, a better person every day. 100%, I agree. Thank you, Hanat. Thank a, you so much, Abe. You you're... have a great weekend. Ah, thank you. You too. I'll see you <laughs> soon, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.